No, share phone? Yeah. No. no, I get you, I get ready for style me. Like no. She not have an iPhone. No. She have one of them device there. Yeah. You know, so them outer yeah. adonis, yeah? She's and a this. Samsung. Yeah. Guys, as I was saying, the phone ship out while ago, I don't know what to do. It. This is when I come to ask if I iPhone my have. This is my try to come this Samsung in about carry on. Anyways, guys, so we're back at the interview today. We have with us Kemar Icon, aka the Sauce Boss. Mm. Look here, a him name Shot God. <laughs> Ladies, uh, man, I tell no lie. Him are the artist who wear the most amount of shots of all lengths. <laughs> Round ya in a dance hall. Him like, all wear the little short shots them. Him will like. Him will like. All right. Good. Eyes on Lele, Saucy, Bevington Brown Morning. All right. So, like, I think about a year friends one of my friends said, Oh, you know, you know, come on, I can't mess. No, I don't know who that person is. I said, yo, you need to know him. Yo, the youth him work ethic turn up and wait till him come at Jamaica and all kind of something. I was just saying to myself, they were probably saying that because they know that I really, really, really like when the artists have work ethic. Yeah. So them know, say, come to Sparks with that. That probably going to get our attention. Mm -hmm. I hear that all the time, you know, work ethic, good writer, good artist, all of this. So what, what was there for me to believe? And then I heard a song from you. Talk to me nice, talk oh, yeah. to me. Master, yeah, watch ya. Yeah, yeah master. Master, watch ya. Yeah. They hear him say to no, say to no, all of my vex, but I've got to talk to him nice. <laughs> this uh, you, that, that youth, you look like him have charisma. And up till then, I actually never knew you. I was only just playing your music. You understand? Yeah, so I played a couple of tracks of before, um, before that. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm never still know. never know you. Yeah. Right? So we just play music. Um, then I had the chance to meet you and I was like, I don't know if this kid is putting on this personality for show. Yeah. Then I had numerous other opportunities of working with him. But what I want to understand him because I know somebody where I really know. As somebody where yeah, I just yeah. meet me, I play music, then I meet him and I had the opportunity to work with him on different shows. And I say, yo, this kid has something about him. And maybe my friend who told me about him is correct. Not a lot of Jamaican-born artists who move overseas manage to crack the Jamaican market. Um, a lot of artists always want to say, yo, I think I play a foreign. But there's always that little thing where we want our music to be recognized in our own home country. How important was that for you? It was a major part because the scene itself, dancer yard before you dance abroad, says a lot. Because at the end of the day, if you get accepted from your own, going out in the world, it's easier. And we know that Jamaica music sells right across the board. People love Jamaica music. They love the culture. They love the vibe. They love our talk. They love the sauce. So it's only right if you get accepted home before you go to the world. And I feel like I got one of the biggest acceptance this summer, you know, and I really appreciate it because I couldn't do it without the support and the love of the people here in Jamaica and out in the world. A lot of people, when they see an artist break, like for you, for example, because you're relatively still new to the Jamaican market, yeah. but you have been gaining a lot of traction. I and some that. persons who don't know you probably say, then where I'm come from, I'm bust so quick. Everything yeah. happens so quick. How long have you been putting in the work into your craft? Four solid years. And it take time. It take telling. It take um, understanding. It take a lot of patience to know that everybody's journey is different. Understand me, and I'm always open to learn, no matter from who. You understand me, especially the person that already took on this journey before. So, I always try to make it my point of duty to introduce myself every time, cause I don't expect everybody to know me. That would be very blunt of me. Yeah. So I remember that I was having a conversation with a friend of mine in, that's in the industry. I say, Yo, dad, you can stop saying. I go by the name of Kemar Icon if you don't know me, get to know me. And I'm like, no, I can't stop saying that because... That's like your, sign your signature yeah, calling card signature, right now. Exactly. And when, like, I guess like when Sean Paul, they just come out and keep on and say, I dirty, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, if 
for me, and not only that, there's somebody somewhere that don't know me. You see me, if I walk into a room somewhere, there's somebody there that is, it is my job to make them know me. It is my job to introduce myself. I'm still fairly new. Five years, I'm still new to a lot of people. As small as Jamaica is, Jamaica is big. You have a lot of people that still don't know who Kemar Icon is. You have a lot of people who still don't know this sauce boss. I understand me? And I accept that and I'm willing to work to spread that. Can I ask you this? Did you always want to become an artist? I know you said that you've, been, you've put in four solid years of consistent hard work to get to this point where you are today. But did you know that you always wanted to be an artist? Um, I would like if I say that because growing up, music has always been a part of my life. So I just know that I love music. I love art. Anything to do with art, I just enjoy it. So if I tell you, say, yo, I'm not going to be the typical Jamaican artist. I say, yo, I grew up in the choir and love um I used to go to church. Yeah, I used to, <laughs> yeah, to go to church and this and no. I just know that I love music. My father had a large musical collection and I know that I enjoy every bit of it. Until I started writing poems. From writing poems, I start putting melodies to words and then from there I just kind of channel my way to music. But it's something that I understand that it's not something that will work for everybody. It's not something that it's for everybody. But for me, I always believe that anything at all I put my mind to, it can manifest. And that's exactly what I did. You talk about your father having a large musical collection. Which songs you used to hear a lot around the house? A lot of soul music. A lot of soul music. So, the Otis Redding, Sam Cooke, that type of music. And it's a, it's a variation of music because he had a lot of dancehall music, to like old dancehall, super cat. I remember hearing Brigadier Jerry sometime. Um, well, I can't go Google that. Because someone want to know the six is real. Yeah. Why well, I said no? Yeah, yes. Brigadier Jerry. Um, there's a series of them, like a lot of artists. And then a lot of Clash. I used to enjoy Clash music. Mm -hmm. And when I say Clash, I mean sound, sound systems. So like the Night Tracks, the I Tension, you know. Kilimanjaro, that type of what music. was it about what was it about clashes that 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 you enjoyed i think it was more of the compilation of like dub plates the customized dub plates and because even nowadays clash is not nice again i don't if we have sound competitions again like one time you know what i mean so for me it was more like I think, sound chat, I think sound chat i think sound um try with the sound clash yeah, still yeah yeah well out in the world mm -hmm. not in in our diaspora anymore right but for me personally it was it, that was something major for me so I, I know that you i just love music and i love the whole vibe of it and this so there's a lot of essence to lose from dancehall as it evolved but i still have a lot of that so the... you grew up around music your father had an extensive music collection this is what we're knowing about kemar icon so far if you're just joining sauce boss in the studio with me because i want to send me for conduct bear interview because i want to love when i do interview <laughs> and so so we're there before i'm going on big tour and all these things i have to catch them in because you see when them go out we we'll have to allow them to be out there them can just every night just eat up out that street. Them have to go do them work and plant them seeds. And spread the music. When I say plant seeds, I mean, no, I don't want to mix up. I'm not talking about breeding nobody. I mean, plant them musical seeds all around the world so them can grow. Because I know when I love the mix up, when I love the met, right? So you, you love the clashes and all of that. At what point did you realize now? You know what I need for take on the music something? Yeah? Is it something that somebody said? Is it something that you saw? Was it in a moment of reflection? Where you say, you know what I got to do the artist something? Yeah? What was it? What was the catalyst? So, um, my, my, my manager, um, Hot Bud? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, back so, to the interview. <laughs> manager decided to say, I'm going to migrate um, at some point. You know, and we say, all right, my year. So I remember one day with their queens in New York. That's a reason overall. And like, we used to always hang out and cook and them thing then, you know, girls and... Run boats. And, yeah. And one day the man said, yo, you know, you need to go to an artist because everything we say, it just have a ring to it. You understand me? And even certain little chat with that makeup. And then one day we just decided to, yo, 
I was at, at the time I was working um, with a security company um, and one night I was on night shift and I just started to write my first song. <laughs> what was that? The first song I wrote was a song called Every Girl of Mine. No, hold on. Why you over here, love? <laughs> because it was... No, why, I, no, why you laugh? Introduce yeah. yourself to the I, IGTV. Right, this the is IGTV. Kemar's manager, um, by the way. My name is Carcel Franciba. Yeah, so... No, I'll... hold on again. You used to play soccer? Go on again. That sound like a, a, a Lionel message. Go on again. How the name go? Carcel Franciba. It's um as in so it's also vibe. a clothing line. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, yeah. pardon. <laughs> so we're, we're vibe, you know, going into parties and just your people react towards Kemar before we have a, a big mainstream song or any songs or whatever. Just people gravitated towards him. Everybody want to shake him and girls want to take picture with him. This are from a long time, based on how he dressed and just his whole personality. Um. So yeah, it's like, yo, you have to do something with this. Like, people love you. You have to do something with this. Be an artist, you know. As you say, I'm a worker. I'm calm, eh? Yo, I'm writing a song, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I'm writing a song, I was like, it's a good effort for your first song, mm -hmm. you know. No, no tell the truth, man. No, man. Oh, no, oh, no. oh you react when you hear the first song. Nobody come pretty it up, come I'm there. Come on, no, no. Come on, can't do you nothing right now. Come on, no, no, what does no, the talk the things then? Can I sing the song? No, when, when, when I listen to it and hear the lyrics of the song, I never want a tremendous song, but for a first song, yeah. it covered the elements that you'd look for in an artist. And, like, one of the first them, if you probably change the chorus or change the motive, it can be a song right now. Alright, alright. Up to now. Alright, all right. All right. here you know. There, there have been times where, like, I go up on a radio interview. I'm a freestyle song. Freestyle verse. I'm a whole lick away. Alright, freestyle the song. No. So, I say, when I say every girl of mine and a gimmicks that. From me see a girl, I want me a girl lyrics that. Yeah. Get the match before the finish chat. Later on a box shot and she a fling it box. So every night I touch the road, you know me, I forget a double. Late night, girl, I text me. Get me in a trouble. Me love my baby mother, but me have to touch it cause I won't see every other girl in by the dozen. Yeah, yeah. IP. Yeah, that, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. That, that. So, it, it was something where, where, me I say, yo, this kind of a ring to it. You understand? It have a vibe. Mm -hmm. And then I, from there, and then I, I just knew that that wasn't where it's at. You understand? Me? I had to do more. I had to sacrifice more. I had to learn more. You understand? Me? I had to do a lot of homework. So, I try to, 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 to do like little different different type of song to, in order to find my sound and my channel. Cause when I sang that song, I sound like me a strain. <laughs> and I sang it, but I still knew that at some point I could develop in something great. You know what I mean? I always tell myself that. So if I start something, I have to finish it and I have to finish great. The, the, regardless of what. If it take me 10 years, if it take me five years, and when I say 10 or 5 years, because you have a lot of people that do music over a period of time, you know when you're working and when you're not working. Because you cannot do something part-time and expect to get full-time results at any given moment. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So if you're going to be an artist and you believe that you can be great, quit yeah. your job. Find a way to quit your job, do whatever it is, and put all your time and effort in. If you, if you believe that much. If you don't believe, then just love it. Because you cannot do something part-time and expect to get full-time um, results at all. What were some of the things that you had to learn and you had to sacrifice in the four years of consistent work that you put in to get to this point? And I give this to any young artist also. Remain hungry and humble. And that's something that got far away with me. Um, I never tried to overstep the margin. I never tried to act like I know it all or, 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 or per se feel like I reach even when I get the attention or I feel like I'm getting the attention because at the end of the day music is something that it, it don't stay forever especially in this time everything is digital it moves so quickly what can I do to make a difference for example a man like Shaggy that cross every musical boundary there are certain things that he have done to still maintain his relevance and his way of being current in today's day and it's far more than just music me for me i feel like i have to have my supporters because i don't have fans fans are people who blow all over the place my supporters feel a part of whatever i'm doing and that's me so 
I'm never too good to stop and take a picture. I'm never too good to give a fan a shout out. I'm never too good to follow a fan. I'm never too good to have conversations with people who support me. Why I can't have a conversation with somebody who support me? Why I feel like I shouldn't follow somebody that so genuinely support me? And of course, I can't follow back every single person. But there's some times where I'm just sitting down and I'm saying, all right, this person is worth following. All right, this, con this person content is worth because I, I do go to their page and see what they're doing or what's going on. And that's I mean, little things like that give me a cut above the rest, especially in today's generation because every day I have a new artist. What makes me different? I cannot make my ego ride me at any given time. And that's something that I had to learn. You understand? Because for I took, even before me turn an artist, I see it all the time. Fans are what down artists to take picture and they're too good to, to take a picture. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't care. Even if I just work, I'm just about to work. If I can do it, I'll do it. And I'll find a way to do it. You understand me? And that's something that you have to also understand, especially in our culture. Jamaican people, they don't like when they go like you more than them. They love it to death. I think Dinah Ross remember, remembers that. <laughs> yeah, listen to me. Them don't like when you're going like you more than them. And that's something that in our culture is very dominant. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, um, far too many times we feel like we're too more than the people that support us. Right. So we have to show them support them because and in, in, in whatever way we can. And we're not saying that you're going to support or try to help everybody with the must support you as to why you can have a bread and butter now. So in any little way you can assist and help them, do it. Kemar Icon is who we're interviewing today, a.k.a. the Sauce Boss. Kemar? Yeah. When you decided to come home now and tackle the local market, <laughs> were you nervous in coming home? What was the first show you did? You remember? Um, I... <laughs> I do remember, but I remember when I was a brand and I said to my producer and a bridging of mine, um, Jack Snack, I'm like, yo, big man thing, if you want, if you're really supposed to take up this music thing, yeah, this art thing, yeah, just go Jamaica and face a crowd that don't know you. <laughs> Trust me, let me give you a root awakening of what you're supposed to do. Listen to me, if you're an artist today, if they rough you up last night, you're going to look one suit and tie up. You know what? <laughs> You have to think about it hard and say, all right, maybe this is not what I'm going to do. So when I decided that I was going to come home, I took it in stages. You understand me? So I had the support of a lot of people in the industry. So Agent Sasko, Shaggy, I obtain, I don't know. So these are people that would call me up sometime on stages. So it was a little bit different. So they kind of break the ice in it, but... Yeah, especially in Jamaica still. No you man, you can't, you can't, big artists can't call you up and you go up on stage and the people them look on you like, oh, yeah. hey, man, yeah, make exactly. him not come off, man. Exactly. So, for me, before I come home, I hold up a DJ in my bathroom going. My mother used to have this cuss, because BNI has been there, Mick. <laughs> BNI is, and sometimes I jump up in the bathroom. It was just my way up. Hold on, if I jump up in the bathroom and I go on like artists and drop yet? Of course, it's a part of <laughs> Understand me? Yeah, I'm holding for that. I'm going with mirror them, mirror them. I'm, 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 I'm an audience. That's just something that as stupid as it sounds, I did a lot of that. I did a lot of that because I always tell myself that I don't want to be one of those artists that when I go on stage, I cannot connect with people, and people can't feel a part of what I'm doing. And I would do that for months, months upon months upon months, until performance is no one to like. The, the most exciting thing for me, you know, I, I always try to be different and I perform. And coming back home, my first performance here, I can't quite remember it, but I had so much good performances, I try to outdo every last performance that I have. I always try to think of things that I've done that I can correct or do better. So for me, my homework is I don't watch regular TV, you know. If I want to know anything that's going on in the world, I just go to Sparks page. <laughs> Sparks, Sparks to the people. Sparks, keep it up to date. Yeah, so for me, YouTube, I watch a lot of YouTube. So if you remember back in the days, we have a lot of 90s dance and wear. Bear workout for, 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 for stagecraft and everything. There's sound system, DJ Panasonic system. You see me? 
know if you ride with him. They might say why, but yeah, I feel off the ride with him. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. So watching a lot of those back in the days, the Papa son, the Stitchy, the Bujo, and I'm a big Bujo fan. I'm a big Bujo fan, and Bujo did a lot of that back in the days. So between me, DJ, and my Bacho man, jumping up and down in my Bacho man, using the mirrors and YouTube, that helped contribute to me coming back home and facing a crowd that I don't know, you know? And I remember some of my performances, I have to keep on my glasses because I can't look at the people. No, it's the first thing I want to do. I want to look at You the have people. the confidence now. Yeah, I want to look at the people. I want to connect with the people. And it's something that I have to learn. And it's something that most young artists in today's day, we don't have that connection with the people because we just go up and we sing the song them and we don't try to, to interact. Or, or, yeah, or interact with them. And it, it takes away from the value of your music and the value of your brand because people know, I said, oh God, man, you sang nice. You understand me? I want the same reaction when my song play in a club. We mm-hmm. have the same reaction on stage. And that is always my goal. Ah, so I'm going to ask you this now. The first time your song play up on radio, you hear it or one of your friends hear it and message you? Um, in a Jamaica? In a Jamaica. No, I never hear it. One of my friends message you. You did believe? I feel like your friend had guessed you. Lie. I, I always think it was a lie. And then, I remember when I get a, the first voice note I got. I don't want to lie. Because the first two people started playing my music out there is you and Johnny Cole. There was no other I never even know that you yeah. respect. <laughs> you and Johnny Cole. There was no other um, DJ playing my music at the time, honestly. And um, I was like, yo. When they sent me the voice note, I was like, yo. Really? And then I remember way down after that, another time I remember one other um, ZJ at the time started playing it. And I was like, yo, this feel good. And then I, t- I know that I had to come home now and start networking with people. And I, I tried to do that over a period of time. So it's not just when I released Sassy, I was coming back home, connecting with people, networking with people and building relationships because that is a big part of building a brand mm-hmm. and as a young artist you have to do that nobody don't know you mm-hmm. how people are going to know you you have to have a humble and a hungry mentality you get a lot of no's a lot of disappointments I'm good at that it contributes to my journey and contributes to where I'm at right now am I the most successful person I wouldn't say that have I gained some success yes is there a lot more to do yes let me, I'm going to ask you this because it's something I've seen a lot of young artists do. When they're trying to break, <clears throat> if they have reached out to persons who they feel have influence, and maybe at the time, those persons of influence don't play their music, like when them get a break now, them start cuss them off because you never did a play my thing. Even though the person might be now playing their music and them burn off the whole of them there and them only attack to who play their music. Your music is now uh, being played by whole heap of DJs, but I don't hear that bitterness in your voice. I can't be bitter against it because, and I say this all the time, if you check my, any, of my, any of my interviews, DJs are human beings too. DJs have preferences too. So if a DJ feel like your song don't compliment their set, it is okay. It, it, you don't have to bash them. Right now, you know. And that's Nobody owes Manager you said anything. Say, 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 for the, say for the choir. Nobody, Nobody owes, owes you anything. nothing. Okay. So it's not your job, right? A part of your job to now convince who to believe to believe. I cannot knock a DJ if they don't play my song. I cannot feel no way if they don't play my song. Because I'm pretty sure there's DJs out there that's playing songs that nobody don't know. And it's just off of the f- love of their music or, or their vibe of music why they start playing that song. You understand me? Yes, sometimes automatically they will start to play what is current because at the end of the day, that's part of their job, to entertain. If this is what the people want, this is what they're going to give. Now, as a young artist, there's time and place with certain things. You cannot go to a DJ in a midline set or her set and expect she's going to try to break a song. You understand me? That is nonsense. Just like how you're trying to build a momentum, a, a DJ has a momentum to build also and keep. So, 
to break a song in a middle of a party, that is nonsense. There's ways and means of going about it. It's just as a young artist when you're when you're trying to break either. And every way you ever get to sing. There's a and a song so you go on barbecue. Nobody know why I hear you. Barbecue people are all a vibe or whatever the case is. Where is it? Nobody know you. Just chill out. You understand me? There are different atmospheres and different time and place to that. So, any DJ whenever they play my song, if they're not playing it, good. You understand me? My job is to gain supporters and not to lose supporters. So, for me, you not know, a bash one DJ, somebody here, say to another DJ, it possibly, that DJ that a fame friend, may end up losing somebody where possibly could have support my my music you understand me and even if i feel bitter about anything i talk within my circle or, or somewhere where i feel like i can vent but you don't go around and bash djs that they, they, they don't play a song or whatever you're not entitled to anything in this life you understand me be glad that somebody's playing a song and if that dj is not playing a song you try to build a relationship or you try to find out why they're not playing a song and as we say djs are human beings guys me they have a laptop whatever me load now my laptop i only want to play whether it's current or not. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if you want to play just 90s, you have some DJs that just believe in a 90s dance hall. Older music. You cannot get them play a current track. Because mm -hmm. they feel like where dance hall is now, they don't like it. And you have to appreciate that. You understand know I me? Mean? Because they're delivering things that is where they believe that they can deliver to the best of their ability. Maybe they don't connect with our current dance hall. Mm -hmm. You see me? And you have to appreciate that. You understand me? Mm -hmm. So, that's just how I look at it. I cannot bash no DJ when they don't play my song. Alright. Um, events communication. Will Kemar Icon ever do reggae? Also, now being a breakout artist, does he have intentions of guiding another young talent? Alright, let me answer the second part for Kemar, even though I don't know him that well. <laughs> when you build a house, you can't build the first floor before you build the foundation. Okay. Right now, I'm in at the foundation building stage. Give him some time. Him only really just to get a breakout now after putting in four years of very hard and consistent work and trying to learn the business. So, I'm going to feel like at right now at this stage in his career, him can time. guide a young talent. Him have to yeah. develop for him thing first and then set it to a level and then he can guide somebody else. So, I'm going to answer that part of the question for him. Um, will you ever do reggae? I have reggae tracks. He has reggae tracks. I have reggae tracks. All right. Quite a few. Um, with more work to be done, what are the areas he feels he needs to work on? Him still a work, man. Give him some time. That, that, that part, that, that part, that, that part, they are come. <laughs> All right. Me, I got to talk about something with me known for sure because I worked on a show in Guyana in Burbese. You were there. Yeah. Dexter Daps, Vanessa Bling, <clears throat> also there, and some other Guyanese acts. Mm -hmm. You were... No, Paul was also there. Yeah. You were the, I think you are now were the youngest of the acts there, right? Yeah. In terms of um, career, career span, and, span and, and yeah, right. And exposure. You, however, for pretty much new artists, people, when they step out on the stage, they're coming like a, a, a rocket launcher, <laughs> right? On the stage. And you got so much positive crowd reaction. Did you expect that from Guyana? Are there things that you do before you go on stage? Do you have a routine? No, I do have a routine. I always try to think outside the box, though. As I said, I always try to top my last performance. So, how in terms of performance, how it works is things spread, especially in a massa crowd. Dropping some gems here for for, for younger acts. Meet philosopher <laughs> Kemar Icon. So. <laughs> You try to connect with at least one or two people. You understand me? Some way, some more. Interaction is key. And with that interaction, you now make them a part of your performance. And that spreads. So, just like oh, if one person boo you in a crowd, chances are two, three, and it eventually... Like a domino effect. Exactly. So, it's the same thing when you perform. You don't. I don't go everywhere with the intention that everybody ever know me. Somebody will know me. You capitalize on that. It don't always work work that way, but in most cases, cases it will. If you're a good performer, you're delivering well, and the content is right, it will work. And the key is always to try to leave an impact wherever, so that a person can remember you. That person remember you, they will leave and tell a friend about you, and that friend will tell a friend, and that's how it actually works. You 
clearly have made an impact because I have seen you doing work with Digicel and I think you did something with Pizza Hut as well. Yeah. True? Yeah. When you get that call there or when manager mm -mm. say, Kemar, yo, Digicel said they want to do some work with you. Pizza Hut want to do something with you. How you feel? Um, when they reach out to me at the time I was at the studio, um, first of all, Craig from voicemail reached out to me and said, um, somebody's trying to get in touch with me. You said he's trying to get in touch. I did kind of brush it off, honestly. You know what I mean? Because I was actually in the middle of the studio working on the other cases. Anyway, sat down on my phone and I said, did you send me a DM? Say, yo, I'm trying to get in contact with the other one. So I sent them email and contact and I diverted them to management and from there and then I never really follow it up because I know how them things go. Sometimes If you want Belch, just Belch Lord, now nobody now stop you now, me now offended. Let's make the Belch and done. Yeah. So sometimes 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 it's just a conversation and sometimes it will manifest, sometimes it won't. So I never put them on my head. But the fact that when I when I sat down later that night and I said, yo, you said actually reach out to me. That means something it's spreading, you know what I mean? The work is growing. People is the, the, the awareness is there. You understand me? So with working at digital, um, it was actually awesome, you know, when uh, when the deal did go through and everything and we start working together. Digital actually helped me a lot. You understand me? Pizza Hut also. They helped to match a face and a name with my brand. Because as I said, a lot of people knew the song or the songs rather, but they don't know me. So I have to big up Digital and Pizza Hut for that. The fact that they saw me fit in for their campaign, they saw me fit in to be the face of their brand too, you understand me? That says a lot for me as a young artist. And any artist at all where in the world, no matter the critics and the candidate, if you're saying that getting an endorsement is not a goal on your list, then maybe in the wrong field. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Because it should be. You want corporate brands to align themselves with your brand. It says a lot about you. It says a lot about your brand. And the fact that I have gained that accomplishment, I really appreciate it. You talk about um, in the early days singing in the bathroom and singing in the mirror. Your mother used to say, yo, you make up all the eyes. You have made some serious strides now. What your mother said when she said um, some of the fruits are beer? Um, I have big family support. Like, everybody in my family support me. Um, my mother is probably one of my biggest fans. <laughs> my mother <laughs> share everything <laughs> on Facebook. Um, she's not for everything that I see, but she share everything on Facebook. So, um, the fact that I have family support, it says a lot. Because everybody want a blessing. Like, you know, everybody want your family and your peers to be a part of what you you're doing. It don't matter. You understand me? So even if you are selling mango, you just want your family to support you in what you're doing. And that is key. So if you have that blessing, the only only job you have is to make them proud. And I feel like I'm doing a very good a good job at that. But that's like a mess with you right now. Cause most Jamaican men, them not like wear shorts, you know. Them love this um long pants thing and whatever. Men want to say you do, you do. You wear holy for shorts. Yeah. You wear shorts below your knees, shorts above your knees, shorts mid thigh, yeah. short shorts. Was that always your thing, or you you wear shorts one day and the girls them start drooling? Like you say, hey, you right, know, so, so me I take on the shorts thing, yeah. So here what? Um, actually, I'm a big like fan of socks you see me yeah so they are, they are all of socks socks go with shorts automatically um for me personally yeah the woman them love see me in a shorts i must add you know i'm not the fattest person but yeah it works in my favor so for me more, more time i care about i roll up my pants when i have other jeans so mm -hmm. show me socks for me they have all of socks Socks, socks endorsement deal coming <laughs> soon, people. Yes, sauce socks. Yeah. So because of that, I, I tend to wear a lot of shots. And me, I'm sure about myself. So you know, you look here. I bought my man free to wear shots for whatever reason. I I just wear shots. I own business. I wear shots. The ladies love it. Camera love the ladies, and the ladies love camera. Now I give it night. <laughs> what colognes do you currently wear? 
Harry Vinci, Jimmy Chu, um, YSL, Gucci. I mix up some more for something, you know. So when I when I put on my clothes and I walk towards my dresser, sometimes I'll fall six cologne. So I need to spray all the first two. I'm going to the kitchen, get something for drink, come back, pop my bag, I spray another two. But I have a large collection of cologne. I love cologne. I feel like smelling good is is, is is like a part of my image. I have to always have that burst of fresh air when I walk in a room. So when I walk and I, them say, oh, Jesus, you smell good, eh? I just feel like, yes, check. Mission accomplished. Your name sauce boss, your musky and cook. <laughs> of course. What do you cook best? Um, Seafood. So the quickest, if I should ever cook for a lady the first time, it would be shrimp and mashed potatoes. You okay. Because the presentation of her up. <laughs> and, too, you know? and the presentation with that, it's not too hard. You know? Mm -hmm. yeah, so you just make it colorful with a couple of sweet pepper and thing, and you don't know the sauce go. Yeah. Soap or bath wash? Um, actually, it's both. Sneakers or dress shoes? Dress shoes. Brief or boxers or no, 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 not at all? Or boxers. Boxers. S Sleep naked or not? Never. Big body girl or flat ass? Big body girl side of me. <laughs> da Dr. Miami are natural? Natural. Okay. And I don't knock anybody that do their body. I just feel like I appreciate ladies that just keep it natural. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean. It says a lot about you. Um, we, it, it, because so much people is just doing too much altering now. It, it does take too much from what you really like about the person. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean. So because everybody have big body now, maybe the, the generation of Saga Sheep say, yo, listen, I some pancake ready, you know. Flatter it out. <laughs> yeah, because everybody have this perfect body. Um, and I feel like it don't have nothing to do with less of self-love or whatever. I just feel like we just follow a lot of trends in these days you now. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of sad. Just appreciate it where you have, man. Find somebody that love you for you. Find somebody that will embrace the things that you have for offer. The body around the day, body can win body out of style, where you have Deflate. <laughs> that doesn't make no sense. All right, so change. we're just going to wrap up now because I know you have a whole heap of things and places to go and see. Um, what's your guiding philosophy in life? I've heard you say nobody owes you nothing. I've heard you say that a few times in this interview. Yeah. What's your guiding philosophy in life? And what are some of the things that you're working on right now? All right, so if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. That is my, that I always try to keep that in my head. And that's what I mean. So I must always be able to learn amongst my peers at any given time. And I, I try to do that regardless of what the situation is. So if I go somewhere and I just feel like I'm in a room with a bunch of idiots, I'm at the wrong place at the wrong time. And that's what I mean. And that can apply to your life right across the board. Um, for me, working on my EP right now, which is titled Sassy Forever. Drops October 25th, which is also the birthday of So Saucy. Hey, hey. Also my birthday. Hey, hey. So, um, they definitely can look out for that. And just look out for more music. Um, more Are songs. there any collabs on it? Um, I have a collab with Shaggy. Um, I'm working, one, working on one right now with um, Agent Sasko. Mm -hmm. um, and my album come out right after. Okay. Yeah, so. So you're doing the EP, then an album? Yeah. Wow, that's a lot of work. Yeah. Where are some of the producers that will be featured? Um, Trackstar, I have Mark Z, I have um, Sean Alakam from um, Florida. Mm -hmm. A lot of young producers. Mm -hmm. A lot of young producers. Trackstar is the person that is responsible for my song right now. Right. But I'm doing a lot of work with Mark Z. Um, Mark Z is actually an um, James um, Eno's producer. Mm hmm. Um, she's responsible for a lot of content seats. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, and I'm excited about it. I'm excited um, because it's my first body of work. Um, I know a lot of people is looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to delivering it also. Okay. Um, yeah. How can persons find you, find you on social media? All forms of social media? Well, on all platform, all digital platform, it's Kemar Haikan, which is K E M A R H I G H C O N. Mm -hmm. K-E-M-A-R-H-I-G-H-I-K-A-N. 
G-H-C-O-N. Um, All right, and I'm just going to go cliche. I know I've, you've been asked this several million times before. Mm -hmm. Why you call yourself a sauce boss? And what does it mean to be saucy? I know, know you're tired for hear that question, yeah, but <laughs> we we'll have to include it because I'm a first interview with you. I didn't call myself a sauce boss. The name was given to me. By whom? Um, the mass. Okay. The crowd. Um, and it means to be saucy. It means to be yourself in your own right. Your personality can be saucy. Your appearance can be saucy. It can be saucy in any given way. Sauce for me is self-confidence. You know what I mean? Embrace yourself. That's, that's what it means. You know? Embrace what you believe. Embrace who you are. Um, so if you like Crocs and socks, embrace that. If, it don't matter. So when I say sauce, it don't mean that you have to wear the things I wear or... Or you have to go out your way to, to be saucy. Just be yourself. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I am not leaving you up because <clears throat> sometimes you have some people who surround artists and they carry very negative energy and turn people off from the artist. You, however, are not one of those persons. This is Kamara Icons, manager. Jesus, show them the t-shirt. Is that your t-shirt from your line? Yeah. No, show them. One off. One off. One off. All right. Off. You, you have these merch for sale? Yes, on my website. What's your website? Let them know. Okay, you're going to spell that slowly now. <laughs> C-A-R-C-E-L-L-F-R-A-N-S-I-V-A.com Okay. What is it like working with Kemar? You want me to run him out of the studio? Yeah. Or you can't talk freely? Uh, uh, we pretty much come from similar background. We're friends from high school, from probably like 13, 14. Um, so there isn't much we don't know about each other, to be honest with you. So... It's almost like we mirror each other in. A lot of Kemar is. Are you able to tell him when he made the fuckery? Definitely. And him not get vexed. Even Cause some they, artists, they, some artists, you know, you, you, they might do something wrong. And I know that you probably wouldn't load him up in public because I've seen both of you work together. And you do have a good synergy. Uh, you, you can just, you know, load him up and him not take it personal. Well, whatever we do, we we'll maintain respect for each other. You understand? So if I um give my opinion on something and him, him think it makes sense but at the end of the day you know we try to ensure that we meet the objective and we look at the bigger picture you know him speak a lot about being humble and we don't try to get ego involved or whatever um, we also have to understand the rules too i'm a supporting cast you understand Kemar is the main topic so i will do as much as i can to support and you know, if if you know we have other people we can call to for reference or opinions, you know. Um being also the brother of Agent Sasko give me a lot of insight into the music going up before and so you know, could I bounce off Jeffrey accomplishments or things that I've seen him done and we use those experiences and we apply it to you know, we're also very good friends with Christopher Martin who come from the same high school as well. So Certain things were there to help us along the way. What we do have it. Success leaves clues, yeah. in other yeah, words. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we, we complement each other. I'm a bit more of the quiet type. You know, Kemar, the artist, him of that persona. But it works. I've been trying to wrap up this interview, but you're both so interesting. Mm -hmm. You look like you work out. Um, how <laughs> important is staying fit and eating healthy right. um, in this business? It's, it's ne very necessary. As a performer, you have to go there and you have to give the audience a show. People want to get that energy um, when, whenever they, they look forward to your performance. But don't want to see a dead performer on stage. You know, it also helps with your voice. People don't understand say staying fit or not being fit affects your voice as well. You know, it, it helps with your breathing. So when you perform on stage, that will come out. If you're not work out, you're not breathe properly, you're going to sound horrible on stage. You know, we don't do as much as we should do, but we understand the necessity of it or the ne how necessary it is. Um, and just being fit overall is good for your life. All you right. understand? All right. And um, before you leave, how can they find you on social media? Carcel Franciva. Okay. That's it. All right. Thank you. Kemar Icons Manager and the Sauce Boss. Respect. Big up.